Hi all, this is Skate, and today I want to chat about the M48 pattern. Not because something's happening to it in 5.5, or there's any drama with any big changes to it or anything like that. I want to talk about the M48 pattern because it still stands as easily my favourite tier 10 medium tank. In fact, it's probably one of my favourite tanks in the entire game. It is an absolutely fantastic tank. And with all the bloody drama in the game and stuff like that, sometimes it's just fun to just get into a tank you're comfortable with, you're happy with, you're content with, and just play the game. And whenever I want to just do that, this is one of those tanks for me. One of the other tanks for me like that is the T-30. And one of the other tanks everybody already knows is a tank like that for me is the infamous T-49. It's just such a fun tank. But I've made way too many videos on that tank. Uh, this replay, by the way, nothing massively extravagant about it, except this. <laughs> Don't know why stuff like this tickles me so much, but it does. Actually, that's probably not the part that had me in stitches. The part of this replay that had me in stitches was when this guy started complaining about the matchmaker and the balance of the teams. But it's his choice of wording, which basically he chooses to moan about the matchmaker. And here it comes. So you can imagine I was already chuckling away to myself after squashing and steamrolling the guy anyway. And his choice of wording to choose to complain about the matchmaker... It's nice being steamrolled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a child, I know, but it really tickled me. And for that exact reason, this replay had to go in the video. But it's not just that, there is actually another valid reason for it. I think it highlights right at the start very nicely what this tank is capable of, even coming up against some very big guns in the game. You can use the gun depression, that rock hard turret to protect yourself, and really lay on the pain and the stress on bigger, nastier tanks. And that is the thing with this tank. It only has 178, I say only 178, but it's got 178 millimeters of frontal turret armor. It's also got a big old gun mandlet, which is also 178 millimeters thick, which means shooting at the front of this thing is very tough, especially if you're using the full gun depression like this, using the medium tank, to, okay, bad example. <laughs> he went straight through, but, the turret on this thing is rock hard. Hit the mantlet on this and it's pretty much a guaranteed no pen for 90% of the tanks which shoot at it. Hell, I've bounced Death Stars over and over again with this tank. The weakness on the turret on this is not the hatch in my opinion, because you can eradicate that weakness by constantly being on the move. The weakness on this is right next to the gun mantlet on either the left and the right hand side. It's domed, which gives that 178mm around 225mm of effective thickness. Basically, those two areas can be penned. The way to eradicate that, much like the hatch, is, is wiggling, is moving back and forth constantly, not sitting still. Because the areas just left of that, and just right of that area, you're looking upwards of 340 effective thickness. I mean, the front of the roof's 369 effective thickness. It just keeps going up and up. I mean, there's areas of effective thickness which touch 400 millimeters. There is nothing penetrating that at that angle. In other words, it's a medium tank with a monster turret, a couple of little weak spots which can mostly be eradicated by not sitting still. And what I was going to say earlier before I was rudely interrupted by the E50M penetrating my tank, which I think went through the upper hull, by the way, was this thing has 9 degrees of gun depression, it has that turret, and it has a very good view range. Which means you can get up early in positions like that, which on this map is one of my favourite positions to go with a tank with gun depression, and light up the entire enemy team while remaining a very, very tough target. I mean, yeah, you can do that in an FV4202, you can do it in a Leopard 1, you can do it in an STB1, hell, nowadays you can do it in an E50M with its 8 degrees of gun depression over the front. I just think this tank is the best at that sort of position. And I base that purely on my personal experience. And that is the playstyle this thing delivers, which I absolutely adore. 
It's a medium tank that can play ridiculously aggressively. Yeah, she's a big old medium tank and she's a little bit slow and chunky in comparison to a lot of other medium tanks available. But with all the other traits this thing has, that in no way inhibits its ability to actually just be a medium tank when you need it to be. It's still very mobile, it's still very capable of circling lots of tanks. And if you can't circle them, no worries. Get on a ridge, use that gun depression, and make yourself a really annoying target. If you haven't played this tank, by the way, and you're watching this video thinking, hmm, that looks pretty respectable for a medium tank, what's its gun like? Gun, also perfectly adequate. In fact, I personally think it's an amazing snapshot in gun. It's got 3,200 DPM when equipped correctly. Since its recent buff, the STB1 just clinches it in terms of accuracy and aim time, but this just is so reliable. And with 250 mil of penetration on the APCR and 200 and no, I like 300 millimeters of penetration on its heat. It's enough to go through turrets of things like E100s, providing it's flat. Once you get a bit of an angle, then it starts to become annoying. And through the front upper casement of the YAG E100, like in the previous clip. And the point of mentioning that is if you find yourself in a scenario where you are stuck face to face to certain heavies, there's many medium tanks which would suffer, which would struggle, which would be completely useless. This would not. In fact, this tank is more than adequate of putting up one hell of a fight as long as you can hide your hull against big, nasty heavies and tank destroyers. That's if you've got to, though. Uh, also in that one, by the way, we spotted five, and we had 1,500 and something I didn't get a chance to see at assistance damage. Now, this replay is where I think this video gets interesting, because, hopefully... If you've watched enough of my videos, you will know I fire very, very little premium ammo. There's a reason for that. I'm, it's a personal thing, but it's very much the opinion. A, I'm a cheapskate, I like to try and save as many credits as I can. But also, I'll do what I can to try and maximise my DPM. And by maximise my DPM, that means using as little premium as possible. Now before we go down a big long route in the channel comments and chat about premium ammunition, we've all got different opinions on it. Personally, I think if you spam it non-stop, you're a bit of an idiot, you're wasting your own credit, you're reducing your DPM, and it's just silly. I mean, if you're firing heat from a T-54 at my T-49, go back down the tiers. <laughs> Seriously, it's completely unnecessary. In that sort of circumstance, no. I don't agree with the use of premium ammunition. It's completely pointless. I mean, to your credit, you're burning, who cares? But it makes me laugh. Now, this circumstance here... As I've already mentioned, M48 pattern turret is very strong. I could have just switched to heat and tried to pen straight through the front of him, right next to the gun mantlet. Instead, the first time I aimed for the turret ring, top of the hull, and the second time aimed for the hatch. I got more damage done because of that. But there's other circumstances when there's heavy tanks rocking up towards you where you don't have a choice. That's when I think premium ammunition is required. For example, if we were to look at that mouse on my left hand side and I was going to rush him, I'm going to get shot by a huge amount of tanks out in the open just so I could get around his side and use APCR. However, in this circumstance, if I switch to my heat and I remain hull down, I'm in a very, very strong position. And as it stands right now, I'm a one shot pretty much to the most of the enemy team. If not all, at all actually, I'm a one shot to the entire enemy team. I've done 2,400 damage. I really don't want to be poking out in the wide open just so I can try and use APCR instead. In this circumstance, my priority quite simply is surviving and doing what I can. I've blocked 1,800 damage and we've done 2,004. If I want to win this game, I sadly don't have a choice other than to stay hull down and to stay in the strongest possible position I can. Which, means annoying the crap out of that mouse by firing nothing but premium at him. And this is going to be the most premium I have used in a long time. In fact, I carry 10 shells of heat in this tank, and I use every single one. But here's my choices. 
try and maximize my damage as quick as I can by actually penetrating. And this is where I mentioned the APCR maximizing damage. Yeah, I'd rather maximize it there, but if they're not going to reliably go through every shot and I have to try and stay hull down and strong, yeah, I'd rather use my heat in that circumstance. I really would. I'd drop my overall DPM, but maximizing my DPM in terms of what reliably will go through, that's a difference. I mean, there I had an opportunity to use APCR, I instantly switched to it because it improves the DPM or effective DPM in which you can use while trying to remain in the strongest possible position I can for my tank. Since being a one-shot to the enemy team, we've done an extra 2,000 damage, and I don't think we would have done that if A, we went rolling out into the wide open, and B, we weren't trying to stay hull down while dealing with tanks from our comfy, solid position. I mean, in this sort of position here, we are now in a two versus two. I am a one-shot to them, and that T-30 is looking pretty damn healthy, but... This is where my tank has the advantage on these hills. Just poking my turret, playing the medium range game, lighting them up before they see me. I was really hoping that last heat shell would penetrate through the top of that E100 turret. That would have really helped in this circumstance right now. Because I need to do some form of pushing out. I can't really. Because I'm just going to get nailed. Thankfully. T-30 is now stuck versus two of us, which means he has no choice but to either move or continue to get penetrated by me from this position. Which, m 4 j Patton's going to win that brawl all day long because I have the quicker aim time, I have the better DPM, I can pop out quickly, get that snapshot in before he is even aimed in. And then one last one into the top of his turret and we do manage to finish him off. Now, I really wanted to share this replay because I thought this is a very interesting one, personally. We did 6,661 damage. We lost 16,000 credits. But we're not running a premium account. We would have gained an extra 40,000 credits by running a premium account there, which means I would have been up 25k. Ah, what game is <laughs> But yeah, it's just meant to be a little video on the M48 pattern. Because I personally love it. And I've got a lot of replays saved in this tank. Which I haven't shared yet. So why not do some M48 pattern videos. I've already got one on the channel as well. But there's no harm putting a couple more out on this tank. Because it's a brilliant tank. And I really enjoy playing it. And if you're looking for an in-depth on this tank. Go check out my other previous M48 pattern video. Because I go into a stupid amount more depth in that video. Hope you've enjoyed this quick one though. Thank you all for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye bye.